Welcome to the Wonder Woman podcast, where we discuss a variety of subjects all pertaining to optimizing your physique, building strength, developing a strong mindset and tools to help you win at life. I'm Michelle McDonald, and I'm the founder of the Wonder Woman coaching team. We are a community of results driven coaches and clients who believe that we can age like never before. Welcome back to episode two of a two-part series with Dr. Jen Gunter. In this episode, we'll be focusing on menopause, some of the interesting research Jen is seeing in this space, and also why it's important that we're having this conversation earlier as we start to look at menopause more holistically. If you're interested in making big changes to your lifestyle, make sure to check out our upcoming 24-week transformation program. It's our signature program tailored to the individual, and it provides dramatic yet sustainable results. Lifestyle continues to be one of the biggest levers we can pull when it comes to our health. At The Wonder Woman, we show you how. Okay, so yeah. I, I know we're going to run out of time, and I want to I want to ask a critical last question, which is, is there anything evolving? You know, most of, most of the people following this, we, I mean, even though we, are, we do have all ages, we are predominantly in the 40 plus. So is there anything exciting uh, that you're aware of that's happening in this space? Any digital health technologies, um, anything that's happening that you think uh, we should be looking at and seeing what's happening there? Well, I would say that um, from a research standpoint, the stuff that I'm most excited about is, you know, they're working on other drugs like Vizoa for hot flashes. So the neurokinin-3 inhibitors. So I'm excited about that for two reasons. One, it's always great to have more options for people. But two, this research often tells us more about how the brain works. You know, so it's always fascinating to, to see what, you know, then what other sort of science can shoot off from, from the research. So for example, the development that went into Vizoa told us a lot about, you know, the biology of hot flashes. So, so I'm excited about that. I think the other thing that I'm, you know, excited about is people really thinking more about menopause more holistically as like the whole person, Mm -hmm. as opposed to just take this drug. Yeah. Just, you know, sort of like, the conversation about menopause happening earlier because, you know, everybody, you know, like when you're on a news show, they're like, what's the one urgent thing women need to know about menopause today? And I'm like, okay, well, what they really needed to know was in their twenties that the best thing for longevity is actually a healthy lifestyle. And that's you, but you can turn that around at any age. So I would say that, you know, whatever age that you are, if you're, you're having questions about how your body is aging and menopause, the very first thing is I would say is like, what's your investment in the foundation? Because, you know, medications can help with certain aspects, but they're not magic wands. And um, they're often oversold as, as kind of like cure-alls. And we have to be really careful because we know that, for example, when people take a vitamin, they're actually less likely to move more. So yeah. So people, people then think they're doing something healthy with the vitamin. So subconsciously, they actually start doing less. And so we have to be, we don't know if that happens when people take hormones or other medications for symptoms of menopause. And so people just need to be very, very mindful that they have a foundation, just like your house has a foundation. And the foundation for menopause is exercise and eating healthy and not smoking. And in one of the studies that was looking at you know, these interventions, they found that only 8% of women were doing all three. 8%. I'm not surprised at all because I specialize in women's health from a very practical in the trenches place. And when people arrive at my doorstep, it's like, all right, let's turn this ship around and let's do it as fast as possible in the most healthy way possible. Yeah. And then then keep going in the right direction. Don't go back because you can't go, there's no more going back to normal. That's not how this works. It's like, no, that, that way of doing things, you got to say goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. And so I just think that, that, you know, we need to move away from the medications absolutely have their place. And I don't want people to think like, oh, you're, when, it's so funny. Whenever I say that people are like, oh, you're anti-hormone therapy. I'm like, yeah, that's no, that's I didn't say that at all. I, what I said was- You want that, choices for us. Yeah. And that, you know, if, if for example, you want to take hormone therapy for hot flashes, which I prescribe all the time and which is the gold standard, you're going to have a better outcome for your life and your longevity 
if you're also doing these other things. But if you think that you can just put the patch on and it's going to take care of everything, then you're going to be disappointed. And that's why I see people start to then dose escalate and dose escalate. And then you see people coming in on like catastrophically high doses of estrogen because they feel better temporarily because of placebo effect. And then they keep going up and up and up as opposed to like, hey, we're going to think about your body holistically. And let's talk about, you know, what you're putting in. Let's talk about how you're moving. Let's talk about medications that might be able to help you. So you're doing those because you know what, if you're up all night with hot flashes, maybe it's going to be really hard for you to engage in an exercise program because you're really tired. And so, you know, you want to think about it. So I'm really excited about the people talking about menopause in a more holistic way. Mm-hmm. It's, it's for exactly that reason that I, that I had Dr. Annie Smokerji as my first oh, kind of menopause great. expert come in and, and talk about it because I know that she's very has a very holistic approach, um, and she's been in the field practicing and dispensing medications for a very very long time. Like you, she's not anti uh, HRT at all, but really looking at the whole picture and how can we optimize? How can we really optimize doing all the pulling all the levers, especially the simple lifestyle levers that we should be pulling, not just for menopause transition, but things like bone health and sarcopenia and cognitive health and cardiovascular health and metabolic health, right? I mean, I like what you said. Uh, it was one of your papers. I can't remember which interview you said, you know, the, uh, I think maybe it was in the agenda, the diet and lifestyle choices that uh, will improve your menopause symptoms are pretty much the standard best choices for pretty much everything else, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So that's why I would, I would say people need to be very, very wary of people saying that they have a special diet because there is no, there are no studies to say that, you know, whatever keto is better than intermittent fasting is better than, you know, just tracking your calories. I mean, if those things help you get into, you know, the calorie deficit that you want to be in, that's great. That's fine. They're just all different ways, but there's no like superior menopause diet. If there were, it, well, there couldn't be because then how would people who lived in Greece have the same longevity as people who lived in, you know, what's now Northern, Northern Russia? They've totally different diets. Dietary, yeah. Mm-hmm. Completely different diets or people, you know, who lived in Iceland versus people who lived in, you know, Ecuador, like, historically, we couldn't have survived in menopause with these drastically different diets. If everybody needed whatever, you know, a very specific food or very specific way of eating, the truth is humans are pretty creative omnivores. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, the one thing that we didn't evolve with was this sort of overabundance of easy to digest food um, that's everywhere, that's hyper palatable. So that's, you know, that's a very different thing. Um, but the idea that there's a specific menopause diet is not born by science. Science. It's the same thing. Yeah, you want to it, and that's what makes a boy. You know, maybe we, you know, it's like high. You need to eat a high fiber diet. You need to get enough protein. You need to make sure you're getting all your, um, you know, your rainbows. nutrients. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. It's not, you know, it's it's. There's nothing. Um, there's nothing magical or special, and there's no hack. So I would say be wary, wary of people who have like hacks. They have the one hack. They've or uncracked the code. There's no code to crack. It's funny that you said that. I, I asked Dr. Um, Asia uh, on the, my interview with her. She's a neuro, neurologist. And I, I asked her, I said, so could you give me like a simple hack? And she visibly, she visibly went, <gasps> I said, I, I, I just like to help people get more fiber in their diet. I said, my hack is I, I buy these beautiful jars of French. Uh, I don't know if you have them in where you are in, in Canada, probably because of the, the, the Quebec thing, but the French uh, chickpeas and lentils. And I just scoop them out and I plop and they're delicious. And I plop them on my um, uh, salads and put them into my ratatouille. And they're just a great way to beef up the fiber and get some plant proteins in and some other goodnesses that, that are in legumes. But she visibly like, <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> so know, but I you know, it. maybe we should be calling fiber is the one hack you don't know about, you know, and uh, you know, I have a, in the office, I, you know, whenever people ask me for dietary recommendations, I just always start with, let's add in more fiber to your diet. Let's see how much fiber you have and let's start adding. it. Cause it's not taking something away. It's not denial you're adding. Um, and so I think there's something like psychological about that. Um, and also when people start having enough fiber, you can see the people see the effect right away because they don't have constipation anymore. So it's like you actually can get a pretty rapid feeling better, you know, even though, you know, the effects on your lipid health and all those things are going to take a little time. 
everybody feels better when they're not constipated, like everybody. And, you know, there's this <laughs> gastroenterologist who introduced me to this fantastic term called pooforia. So it's the idea that when you have this- I get it. Yeah, exactly. And everybody feels better when they've had pooforia. <laughs> Oh yeah, my husband and I. It's like you hear it. Like it's like a, you won. A, you won an award. You won a. You won an Oscar. That's right, how it is. Right, like high five people in the hallway, and and so yeah. that's fiber. Is, fiber is your way to to pooforia. So yeah, I try to have you know a list of foods in the office, and I say, look, you know, if you're struggling, you don't know, just Boy, start with that. High, just start with a high fiber cereal. Just start somewhere, you know. And a high fiber cereal makes it so easy. And you know, cereals have a lot of added micronutrients too. They're fortified, and so you know, find the cereal that you can stick with. And then people say, "Well, what about the added sugar?" I'm like, "Don't worry about that right now. Just just get started on the fiber. Make one change or oatmeal is another one. I make a lot of overnight oats, and mm-hmm. uh, so then I don't have to make anything in the morning. You know, I also like start to have that it. one thing. Make it easy." Yeah, I just make it easy, start with one thing, and then you build on that, you know, and and then when you're like, okay, I made one change, I can make another change. And uh, but yeah, so the fiber is the one I would say we need to sell it as a hack. It's the one hack they don't want you it's to the know. one hack, make some like really viral uh TikToks. I'm my 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 mind is thinking because I want to dent the narrative in a powerful way where this easy stuff that you know, people spend a lot of money to work with me and, and it's like, this should be available for everybody. If you want the one-on-one coaching, I can give it to you, but this stuff should be available for everybody. And on doctor's lips, it should be, it should be as easy for them to say, oh, we'll try this, you know, the five, like the basic stuff versus I get a lot of gals coming to me and saying they've been recommended keto and IF. And I think, gosh, of all the things, you know, those are such specific and and extreme diets and hard to sustain for a long term. And a lot of them have negative repercussions downstream if you run them for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I think we've seen, especially with people, you know, who do keto and have a lot of saturated fat um, in their diet, you know, they eat a lot of animal fat. And um, so there's obviously a concern about that. Um, Yeah. I mean, the other thing I say is try to have more plant protein, you know, Mm -hmm. that's actually, there was a recent, um, you know, study looking at menopausal women, you know, finding that, you know, increasing plant protein, guess what? It had beneficial effects. And so, yeah. So I always tell people, look, I mean, see if you can make like one vegan meal a week. Like it's, you don't have to eat vegan every day, but think about what, what are the ways you can start to increase plant protein, you know, in your diet that work for you. And then once you start doing it, it's not so hard, but yeah, these restrictive diets, man, like, I mean, do you really want a surgeon who's fasted for 16 hours operating on you? I don't know. Like I always think about that. Like I just, it's a good point. Like, do you want a pilot who's 12 hours into a fast? I don't know. Like, I just, I, I think about those things. I think I don't perform the best when I haven't eaten for 12 hours. Um, maybe some people do and, and great for them. Great for them. But, you know, the more restrictive and the more difficult it is, the less accessible. And, you know, what happens then if you want to travel or, you know, you want to try new foods? Like that's the great thing about going to other countries is you can, or even just different parts of your own country, you can find all kinds of new crazy things to eat or not crazy, but just like they're different. You're like, oh, I never thought about putting those things together. Wow. I got to taste something new. You know, when we put people that's on super point. restrictive diets, like, you know, they don't get to have those, that, those wealth of experiences, the things that bring you joy. Like you have to have joy too. You have to have joy right? Joy is very crucial to longevity and loving the fact that you're going to be around longer. Okay. Let's wrap up with, is there anything, I mean, you've done so much already and, uh, it's, you know, your list of credentials is insane. Is there anything else that's on the table coming up that you want to share with people? Anything on the table coming up? Um, <laughs> but well, uh, I am going to um, England in March on book tour, and I'm going to actually be speaking at the British Library with one of my idols, uh, Dr. Helen King, who's a, a classicist and an expert in ancient gynecology and Hippocrates. And so we're wow. going to have an amazing conversation at the British Library. Um, when is that? Uh, it's in March. I think it's on March 20. It's on the 20th or 21st. It's on my site, the Vigenda. And I, you know, I, I am always really excited about all the posts I write for the Vigenda because I actually learn a lot too. I always make sure that I've, my science is accurate. I'm always double checking myself. And then I'm also, I have a new book that I'll be working on once I recover from this book tour. You're um, already, are you going to write a book on pregnancy? 
No, 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 no. I, I did my book on prematurity. I'm good. Uh, there are other, I don't practice obstetrics anymore. And there was True. lots of people yeah. who in that space uh, to follow. If you're not following Shannon Clark on Instagram and you're interested in the pregnancy space, I'd recommend her, her accounts, uh, babies after 35. And you know, the book, no, the book is going to be a more broader about like sexism in medicine and, and the legacy that we're still sealing from that today. So, I but love I love it. I'm going to have a little bit more of a break and yeah, I'm ex- excited to, uh, to get actually get, I'm really, this is like, this probably makes you feel good. I'm really excited to get back into my exercise routine because hardcore travel really, really, it's really hard. And, uh, you know, when you're like working from seven to 11 every day and you have to get up at six to do hair and makeup, there isn't time to go to the gym. There just like, isn't cause you have to sleep. So, but I was really, I, re, I was like, okay, I'm going to do my steps. I'm going to walk everywhere. So at least I'm getting that in. So I'm actually excited to get back to my weights and get back into routines make us so comfortable. They do. And our bodies love routines. So there you have it, guys. Dr. Gunter is excited to get back to her resistance training. And she <laughs> knows how fundamental exercise is to the human body and aging well. Absolutely. It's, you know, it's the number one thing. And I mean, I, less, I have to say, I find your account very motivating on days when I'm like, oh, I don't want to work out. And I see your account. I'm like, okay, all right. Okay. Michelle's out there doing it. And I know she's lifting way heavier <laughs> than I am. So I'm going to get out there. So I, I actually find you very okay. motivating. You are so sweet. Thank you so much. I've, I just had a fabulous interview and I promised you I would keep this to an hour. I could, I definitely want to have you back on the show sure. and I hope we can figure out something where you can do some round tables, but also maybe do something in real life. I think that could be fabulous. Oh, that would be a lot of fun. I'd love to meet in real life. So yeah, we should, we should start thinking about what that might look like, how it might evolve. We'll manifest that. I can make it exactly. we'll happen. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Wonder Woman podcast. You know, we don't make money from this podcast. Our mission is to get as much great information out there to the widest audience possible to help more people like you thrive at any age. You could really help us out by sharing this episode with a friend who needs to hear this or share the link to your favorite episode in your stories or whatever social platform you use. Second, please leave a rating and review on ratethispodcast.com slash Wonder Woman. You're not just showing your support for the show. You're also helping other women find us. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any episodes. Thanks again for tuning in.